This is a communications satellite designed to provide communications into South America. Unusually, it's a flight spacecraft that was designed to be launched into space, but it hasn't been. So that's what it's doing for the museum. As far as I'm aware, it's almost unique. These things cost so much to build that we only invest this much on something that's actually going to be launched, and this was intended to be launched. The satellite had to be craned up the side of the museum in order to be able to crane it in at the second floor because it's too large to come up in a lift. There were sort of heart-in-mouth moments when you consider how many millions of pounds worth of gear is, is just slung from a cable. It was quite a, an intricate operation once they got it up to the right height to actually swing it in through the hole in the side of the building. There are certain things which we take for granted. You know, live sports events, a live report from a disaster somewhere, but also a huge amount of computer networking. So if it weren't for satellites, we certainly wouldn't be able to have any live communications to places the other side of the world. Because they are built in very small numbers, each one is a hand-built one-off. There's a team of about 200 people that work pretty much full-time for two or three years on a satellite. The satellite itself has to be designed to be completely maintenance-free for about 12 to 15 years operating life. In these various clean rooms down this corridor, different parts of the satellite are built that controlled temperature and humidity. And that ensures that there's no contamination or buildup of dust that gets into any of the components. Here you can see there is uh, one of our Eurostar satellites being built. You can see the central cylinder, which is the sort of the main backbone of the satellite. The satellite that we have in the museum was the first of this model type, the Eurostar 3000. We have 32 in orbit. The ones that are being built are somewhere in the mid-40s. Today we've just delivered the antenna reflectors to the museum that attach to the sides of the spacecraft and then deploy once it's in orbit. The shaping on the reflector is what determines the shape of the beam transmitting towards the Earth or receiving from the Earth. It's a deliberate distortion of the beam, but in a very clever way, because you can design the antennas to cover very specific parts of the Earth. This was a requirement for the satellite that's in the museum, to cover the Andean region of South America. Just by shaping the reflector, we were able to get high gain at all these cities with no energy wasted anywhere else. For those of us who worked on this satellite 10, 12 years ago, it's really satisfying to see it actually put to use through the museum. It's a, a rare opportunity for us to be able to show our end product because normally it's launched to a point where nobody can see it.